Lou and Stella dreaded bath time. Their stepfather, Chief Obina, would insist on bathing with them, his eyes roaming over their developing bodies. The girls felt uncomfortable, sensing something was amiss. Daddy, can we bathe alone? Nunu asked, trying to hide her unease. No, my dear. I want to bond with my daughters, Chief Obina replied, his smile sending shivers down their spines. The story begins with Nunu and her younger sister, Stella, two bright, beautiful girls who were still in secondary school when they lost their father. Their mother, Susan, had been doing her best to raise them alone, working hard as a receptionist, but her income was barely enough to cover their daily needs. She longed to provide a better life for her daughters, and the struggle was wearing her down. It was during this difficult time that Susan met Chief Obena, a wealthy man with a respected reputation in the community. Admiring her strength and dedication to her daughters, Chief Obena soon proposed to Susan, and they married. With his support, life became more comfortable. The sense of relief was immense. For the first time in years, Susan and her daughters felt secure. Chief Obina brought his son Justin into the family, a 26-year-old pastor, respected for his strong faith and kindness. Chief Obina took Nunu and Stella as his own children, and it wasn't hard for the beautiful girls to call him daddy. Susan had to quit her receptionist job to be a full-time housewife, as Chief Obina had promised to care for the big family, as he doesn't want his wife being controlled by some wicked or mean employer. As time went on, the true behavior of Chief Obina started to show he has such bad behavior that even when he wants to leave money for food, he attempts to touch his stepdaughter's breast. Chief Obina's advances escalate. He began sneaking into the girls' room at night, especially when Susan wasn't around. Pretending to check on them, he would try to violate their boundaries while they slept, leaving the girls scared and confused. When they resisted or tried to protest, he became menacing, threatening to make their lives difficult if they ever spoke out. He reminded them constantly that they were under his roof, that he held all the power in the family. Nunu and Stella dreaded bath time. Their stepfather, Chief Obina, would insist on bathing with them, his eyes roaming over their developing bodies. The girls felt uncomfortable, sensing something was amiss. Daddy, can we bathe alone? Nunu asked trying to hide her unease. No, my dear, I want to bond with my daughters, Chief Obina replied, his smile sending shivers down their spines. Susan, their mother, remained oblivious to her daughter's concerns. Chief is just being affectionate, she'd say, dismissing their reports. But Nunu and Stella knew better. They saw the lust in their stepfather's eyes and felt his gaze lingering on their bodies. They avoided bath time, but Chief Obina would insist. Susan had married Chief Obina for security and status. She reveled in the luxury lifestyle he provided, indulging in designer clothes and lavish spending. Her friends envied her, and she lapped up their admiration. When Nunu and Stella reported their father's behavior, Susan ignored them. You're just being dramatic, she'd say, distracted by her phone or shopping plans. That night, Chief Obina and Susan gathered Nunu and Stella in the living room. The tension was palpable. Girls, we've noticed you've been acting strangely, Susan began. We want to talk to you about it. Chief Obina leaned forward, his eyes locked on his daughters. Whatever I do, I do it out of love. I have good intentions for you, not to hurt you. Nunu and Stella exchanged skeptical glances, but their stepfather continued. Remember. Don't let any man or outsider touch you without daddy or mummy's consent. Only trust your guardians. The girls nodded, unsure. We love you, and we want what's best for you, Susan added. Nunu and Stella looked at each other, then back at their parents. They saw the concern in their eyes and began to understand. Okay, daddy. We'll be careful, Nunu said. Stella nodded in agreement. Chief Obina smiled, relief washing over him. That's my girls. Now let's put this behind us and move forward. The family hugged and the tension dissipated. When Nunu was accepted into the university, 
Chief Obina made it his responsibility to cover all her expenses. He ensured that her tuition fees were paid promptly and went out of his way to secure her a comfortable accommodation near the campus. His generosity extended beyond basic needs. Whenever he visited, he would give her a substantial amount of money, far more than she actually required for her studies and daily expenses. At first, each time Chief Obina came to visit her, Nunu would call her mother Susan to let her know that Daddy had stopped by. This was something she felt was important, as it kept her mother informed and reassured her that she was being looked after. However, Chief Obina soon began discouraging her from making these calls, insisting that it was unnecessary and that it was his responsibility to visit and support her. As Nunu moved into her second year, 200 level, Chief Obina's visits began to change. He no longer came alone but started bringing along his friends, influential men who would often take Nunu and her friends out to lavish dinners or social gatherings. At first, this seemed harmless, even enjoyable for Nunu, who viewed it as an extension of Chief Obina's generosity. However, she soon noticed that Chief Obina was developing a relationship with one of her friends, a young lady who often accompanied them on these outings. Although this felt strange, Nunu decided not to mention it to her mother, thinking, what she doesn't know won't hurt her. She also knew that her mother trusted Chief Obina so much that she would likely dismiss any concerns she raised. Eventually, one of Chief Obina's friends, who had become a frequent visitor with him, began showing interest in Nunu and asked her out. Nunu was uncomfortable with the suggestion and politely refused. But when she told Chief Obina about her refusal, he reacted in a surprising way. Rather than supporting her, he insisted there was nothing wrong with her dating his friend. He rationalized it by saying that his friend was a respectable man who would treat her well and could offer her the security she needed. Chief Obina even went so far as to warn Nunu about dating boys her own age, saying they would only mess her up, whereas his friend could provide stability and care. Nunu agreed to date Mr. Gabriel, Chief Obina's friend, largely because she trusted her stepfather's judgment and believed he had her best interests at heart. Chief Obina had always presented himself as a caring, protective father figure, so Nunu saw no harm in following his advice. One evening, Chief Obina visited Nunu at her university and suggested they go out for the night. He offered to take her and a few of her friends to a party in another town. Eager for a break from her studies and looking forward to seeing Mr. Gabriel, she agreed to go. When they arrived at the party, Nunu discovered that Mr. Gabriel was nowhere to be seen. Curious, she asked Chief Obina about it, and he reassured her that Mr. Gabriel would join them soon. The party stretched late into the night, but there was still no sign of Mr. Gabriel. Nunu grew a bit anxious, but Chief Obina continued to reassure her, telling her not to worry and to enjoy herself. Eventually, the party wound down, and Chief Obina suggested that they check into a nearby hotel since it was too late to drive back. Tired from the night and trusting her stepfather, Nunu agreed. After checking in, Chief Obina and Nunu found themselves relaxing in the hotel room, chatting and laughing together, as they always did as father and daughter. Chief Obina handed her a drink, and they continued to talk. As the conversation drifted, Chief Obina suddenly steered it in an unexpected direction. He began asking Nunu personal questions, like if she had a boyfriend and if Sheikh had ever had sex before. Caught off guard, Nunu hesitated but decided to answer honestly figuring her stepfather was simply looking out for her well-being. She admitted that she had a boyfriend during her first year in university, but she quickly clarified that she was still a virgin. She explained that her previous boyfriend had broken up with her after she refused to have sex with him, standing by her decision to wait. Chief Obina listened, nodding as she spoke, but his line of questioning left her feeling slightly uneasy. Chief Obina did not say anything. He just shakes his head and laughed. He left for the toilet to ease himself before he backed Nunu had already and slept off. However, Nunu woke up and saw her dad naked beside her. She was also naked under the duvet. The reality dawned on her. Her stepdad had deflowered her. 
the man she had trusted. She started crying. This woke her stepdad up. He pleaded with her and said it was better if he deflowered her instead of his friend. For days, Nunu distanced herself from everyone she felt bad, but couldn't tell anybody. From that day onward, her stepdaddy and his friend started having sex with her, exchange for big gifts, money and clothes. However, Nunu's friend who was dating her father got to know that Nunu was sleeping with her stepdad and her stepdad's friend. She started making a fuss about it. She told some of their other classmates, and it became a scandal in school. People pointing hands at her while she walks around campus. Her few friends dissociate from her not wanting to ruin their image being friends with Nunu. Isolated and ashamed, Nunu struggled to cope. One of Nunu cousins who attends same school heard about the issue, and instead of asking Nunu, she went ahead to tell Nunu's mother. For weeks, Susan was worried sick. She had been searching for Nunu everywhere, but her daughter was nowhere to be found. She had gone to Nunu's hostel, asked her friends, and even checked with her classmates, but no one had seen her. Nunu had made up her mind. She was done with her stepfather, Chief Obina, and his friends. She refused to sleep with them or go out with them again, but Nunu's decision came with consequences. Her stepfather, Chief Obina, was furious. He disowned her refusing to support her academically. Susan tried to beg Nunu for forgiveness, but her daughter wouldn't listen. Stella, Nunu's younger sister, also kept her distance from her mother Susan. Susan realized she had made a terrible mistake. She had ignored the signs of Chief Obina's predatory nature, and now her daughter was paying the price. Determined to make things right, Susan took Chief Obina to court. In the courtroom, Obina's face twisted in anger and shame. His eyes darted between Susan and the magistrate. His jaw clenched. Susan testified first, her voice shaking. I was blind, Susan sobbed. I didn't see the evil in Obina. He ruined my daughter's life. When it was Obina's turn to testify, he spoke through gritted teeth. Those three days in jail opened my eyes, Obina snarled. I realize my mistakes now but Susan's just trying to ruin me. Justin, Obina's 26-year-old pastor son, testified next. My father is a good man, Justin said. But when he drinks, his behavior changes. I don't know what happened with my siblings. After hearing both sides, Magistrate Harriet made her ruling. Chief Obina, you'll undergo a one-month no-alcohol observation, Magistrate Harriet ordered. Let's see if sobriety changes your behavior. Obina's face crumpled, his anger replaced by despair. He knew he had lost control. As the court adjourned, Susan felt hopeful. Would Obina's sobriety bring justice for Nunu? Six months passed, and Chief Obina completed his rehabilitation program. He remained sober, attending therapy sessions and support groups. Nunu, now free from her stepfather's grasp, began healing. She received counseling and support from her mother, Susan, who worked tirelessly to regain her trust. Stella, too, began to forgive Susan, understanding her mother's blind love for Obina had nearly destroyed their family. Magistrate Harriet reviewed Obina's progress and deemed him fit for trial. The court found Obina guilty of child abuse and exploitation. Susan finally found closure, knowing justice had been served. She vowed to protect her daughters and support other victims of abuse. Nunu and Stella flourished, surrounded by love and support. They became advocates for child rights and abuse prevention. The family's journey was long and arduous, but ultimately, they found redemption and healing.